this is now our third look at indices and probably the most uh, ta well definitely for most taxing but absolutely essential we can look at two different rules the first one we're going to look at is the following if we have a to the power of m over n what we find is the nth uh, the nth root the nth root of a to the n now this is really quite unnecessary in my book the way i prefer to just look at it is that we take the uh, the nth power of the number and simply raise it to the nth power. I find that really quite um, unnecessary. The other one is that if we have a to the minus m, it's 1 over a to the positive m. And we'll look at how this works. So let's look at some really uh, basic stuff with this to begin with, and then we'll go through some. a to the negative m is 1 over a to the m. We're used to writing all numbers without the denominator. So if we've got 8, and we say now that uh, it's going to be 8 to the second power, we know that's going to be 64. If I said 8 to the negative 2, then what we're going to have is 1 over 8 squared, or 1 over 64. And the way I like to think about this is as follows. We write 8 as 8 over 1. If you look at it like so, 8 over 1 to the negative 2 is the same as making that um, index positive and writing it as the reciprocal. That's all it's saying. 8 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over 8 to the positive 2. And whilst this seems quite trivial on these, if you can hang in there with that idea, it kind of makes sense. So, that is your first part of this. If we've got a to the negative m, then we'll have 1 over a to the power of m. So if we have now 5 to the negative 3, we get 1 over 5 to the positive 3, or 1 over 125, which is 5 cubed. If we have x to the negative 4, then it's going to be 1 over x to the positive 4. These are identical, and we can use this identity sign with three bars. Now let's look at this um, example, this whole idea of a to the m. So what we're saying then, if we want to write it, if we've got a to the m over n, we take the nth root. Another way of looking at this is the following, and I prefer this if we have to have a definition, is that you take the nth root and raise it to the m. I much prefer it in that way. So let's have a look at something really quite straightforward. If I've got 8 to the 1 third power, what I'm going to do is take the cube root of 8, the denominator is the root that I take of it, now the cube root of 8 is 2, and then I raise it to the first power, which of course is just 2. So, taking the cube root, and out of interest, the cube root, one, this is um, exactly the same notation that we could use between the two. So those two are identical. So let's look at something slightly more taxing. If we've got 25 to the um, 3 over 2 power, let's take the square root. So what we'd have is 25 to the 1 half cubed. 25 to the 1 half is 5. 5 cubed is 1, 2, 5. So we take the, second, the, the denominator, the root in the denominator, and raise it to the numerator. So if we had now... Um, for example, 1 to 5 to the 4 over 3 power, we would take the cube root, we know the cube root now is 5, and raise it to the 4th power, which would give us 625. 81 to the negative 3 over 4. This hopefully will get you thinking. 81 to the negative 3 over 4. So let's first write it like this. Let's then write it as 1 over 81 to the 3 over 4. The fourth root, this is always going to be 1. Anything to the 1 to whatever power is just 1. Let's take the fourth root of 81. The fourth root of 81 is going to be 3. 3 cubed is 27, so we end up with 1 over 27. And we're now up to the top end of GCSE with negative fractional indices. So I've just combined the two. What we'll do in this video is step through
different sorts and then combine them towards the end like this one. So, 4 to the negative 2, 1 over 4 squared, 1 over 16. So if you want to start with it as 4 over 1 to the negative 2 and rewrite it as 1 over 4 to the positive 2, anything, any 1 to any power is itself 1 over 4 squared is 1 over 16. Again, this may be really quite straightforward for you, um, but hopefully you're going to be fairly comfortable. 27 to the one third power, we should start spotting these now. The third root of 27 is 3, 3 to the first power is just 3. This is my main pet hate, 16 to the one quarter power. We're not doing a quarter, it's not, and that means doesn't equal. You've seen equals, this means it doesn't, it does not equal 4. We take the fourth root, 2 times by 2 times by 2 times by 2 is 16. Therefore, 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16. So to undo both sides, 2 to the fourth to the 1 quarter is equal to 16 to the 1 quarter, which of course, knowing our rules from last time, will give us 2 to the 1 is equal to 16 to the 1 quarter. So 2 is equal to 16 to the 1 quarter. And you would never ever do this in your workings. Absolutely never. It's complete overkill. You should do this by what I call inspection or just straight out statements. But that gives you some idea. 8 to the negative one third. 8 to the negative one third. Let's put a 1 underneath it. Let's turn it upside down and make it to the positive one third. The third root of 8 is 2. So we can now write this as 1 over 2. 1 is just going to stay the same. 1 to the 1 third power is just 1 is just 1 is just 1. 4 to the 5 over 2. Let's think about this one. 4 to the power of 5 over 2. Don't need our brackets there. I don't know why I've put them. Let's take the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 to the 5th is 32. Therefore, 4 to the 5 over 2 power is 32. 64 to the half is the square root of 64, which is 8. 5 to the negative 2 is 1 over 5 squared, which is 1 over 25. 9 to the 7 over 2 is going to give us 3 to the 7th power. So it's going to be 3 times 3 times 3 and so on and so forth. So these are things that we should start to be fairly comfortable with. So 4 to the 3 over 2, we take the square root. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. 8 to the 2 over 3, we take the third root of 8, which is 2, and raise it to the second power. We've looked at this one. Let's look at this one right here. 25 to the negative 3 over 2. Let's turn that upside down. Remember, that's over 1. Let's write 1 over 25 to the positive 3 over 2. The square root of 25 is 5. So we're going to end up with now 1 over 5 cubed. 1 over 5 cubed is going to be equal to 1 over 5 cubed, which is the same as 1 over 1 to 5. Let's look at this one. 64 to the negative... 5 over 6. Okay, we can rewrite this as 1 over 64 to the 5 over 6. Positive, we just made it um, positive. The 6 root of 64 is 2. 2 to the 5th power is 32. So it becomes 1 over 32. All of these will lend themselves favourably to your work. There's nothing that should absolutely um, kill you. Let's look at this one. It's 6 and 1 quarter to the half power. Let's think sensibly. If I converted this into a, a top-heavy fraction, I would have 25 over 4. 25 over uh, 4 to the 1 half power is the same as square root of both, which we could also write as 25 over uh, 4, which, of course, is 5 over 2. You may even see it written like so, 25 over 4. And we'll deal with that in terms of our um, thirds as we go. Let's look at this one down here. Let's 
look at this one, 125, 125 over eight to the two over three power. So we need to take the cube root of both, the cube root of 125 is five, the cube root of eight is two. We now need to square these, so we're gonna be left with 25 over four. It would be no different, for example, if we now had um, 81 over 16 to the negative, uh, what should we go, negative three over four. So let's first turn it upside down, 16 over 81 to the positive three over four. Let's take the fourth root of both. Fourth root of um, 16 is gonna be two. Fourth root of 81 is gonna be three. Okay, so now what we're gonna end up with is the following. We're gonna cube these. So we end up now with eight over 27. So these are negative fractional indices. 81 over 16 to the negative three over four is the same as 16 over 81 to a positive three over four. We take the fourth root. The fourth root of 16 is two. We take the fourth root of 81, which is three. We then cube both eight and 27. There will be nothing that you can't do, um, really. Uh, let's look at this one now. Nine to the one and one half. We could write this to, as nine to the three over two power. We take the square root, which is three. We cube it and we get 27. Okay. Um, so this is pretty much it. Um, this one right here, we could look at this. 1 over a cubed is going to be a to the minus 3. The root of m, m to the half power. 1 over 100 is going to be 10 to the minus 2. If we think about 10 to the negative 2, we write 1 over 10 to the positive 2 or 1 over 100. Okay, so these are fairly straightforward. That is going to be one third, 125 to the third power. You're not dividing it by three. Seven squared is 49. Five to the minus three is one over one, two, five. Two to the minus one is a half. 36 to the negative half. If we think about 36 to the negative one half, we could write this now over one, or we could write it as one over 36 to the half power. The square root of uh, 1 is 1, the square root of 36 is 6. So 36 to the negative half is 1 over 6. don't know what else I wanted to look at in this. Um, oh, here we go. Um, these should make sense. Again, these are going back to our simple rules of indices. a to the n multiplied by a to the n is a to the n plus n. So we'd have 3 plus minus half, which will give us uh, 2 and a half or 5 over 2. This one is quite nice. What we would have, this is quite a tricky one actually, p to the 1 quarter power divided by p to the negative 1 fifth. Okay? Now if you think about this, we're going to be subtracting. So it's going to be p to the 1 quarter minus minus 1 fifth or one quarter plus one fifth, okay? And knowing your fraction work, you can see that's gonna be nine over 20. So we get P to the nine over 20. This one here, we're gonna get three squared, and then we're gonna get X to the four over five power. So we're now using basic rules of indices that we've learned before, X to the four over five. So we could write this as nine, as it were. These ones, again, we can play all different manner of um, rules with them. But essentially, if you take your time, it will make sense. So let's look at this one quickly. 4t to the 3 over 2 divided by 12t uh, to the 1 half. We know 4 divided by 12 is 1 third. t to the 3 over 2 divided by t to the half, we subtract half away, which is going to give me t to the first power, or just t. 1.5 minus 0 0.5 is going to give me 1, so it just becomes t. So here we are. Essentially, that's what we we can do. You can even be very cheeky if you've got this one, and we'll just quickly scan that one before we call it quits. You could put this a back up in the top as a to the half. What this is saying is 1 over, if we just 
eliminate this, it's saying 1 over a to the minus 1 half, which we could write as a to the positive 1 half. If you think about what we've got, we've got 1 over a to the minus 1 half, and we know that we can turn this upside down and make that positive, so it becomes a over 1 to the 1 half. So we can throw that back up into the, um, the numerator, and we'd end up with 2 over 8, and in the numerator we'd have a multiplied by a to the 3 over 4 multiplied by a to the 1 half, and all we'd have to do is add 1, a half, and 3 quarters. So you'd end up with, what, 2 and a quarter, um, or 9 quarters, and of course this would cancel down. So this is the stuff that you'll get into, and the reason we need this is for something called differentiation and integration, which is in calculus. So there we go. That's a brief overview of negative and fractional indices. Our take-home message is if we have a to the m over n power, then we can write this as a to the... Um, 1 over n uh, raised to the n power, and if we have a to the minus m, we can write it as 1 over a to the m. So hopefully I've breezed through that. If there have been any slight um, dodgy ones, please drop me a note, because I never I, I say I never do these beforehand, so it's pretty much winging it as I go. But that should give you some idea on how to deal with these.